Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Force here. I've got a special dual commentary with Cricket from Cricket Starcraft. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. All right, pretty awesome stuff. And we do have a series of games here. This is going to be a best of three from QuickWeb's eight-player tournament. Now, this is going to be the first set in the round of eight between these two players. We are here on Shakur's Plateau. In the upper right-hand position, we do have TriMaster as the Green Terran player. And then bottom left, we do have Destiny as the Yellow Zerg player. And uh, Cricket, this is our first dual commentary together. Uh, certainly lovely to have you here. We have featured a few of your videos on the channel before. Why don't you go ahead and give everyone a, uh, a run rundown of this tournament because I know you're kind of going about organizing this whole thing and setting up all of these dual commentaries. Yeah, QuickWeb is the sponsor of this tournament. Of course, uh, there'll be a link in the description where the thread and all the information for all the other matches are coming. But basically, QuickWeb has said, I want to put money into esports. I want you to go and organize the tournament and make it all happen. And so I invited eight players, TriMaster and Destiny are two of those, in to compete against the first place prize of 150 bucks and the second place prize of 50 But, of course, if this tournament goes well, if people really enjoy it, then the sponsor is more than willing to put more ex or, or extra money into it so definitely want to thank force for um, for trying to promote it that much more in helping eSports but that's the kind of the lowdown on the tournament and so I'm really excited about what these two players are going to do. Yeah, pretty awesome stuff. Certainly anything that promotes esports is something that I am a big fan of. Love the StarCraft 2 scene and uh, definitely something we do want to promote. Now, it does look like Destiny will be going hatch first here in Shakuras, given it's a very large map. And uh, for players out there or, or viewers out there who don't know, you can actually not spawn in that close position directly north or south of your opponent. So that makes quick expand builds a little safer. We also see him moving out with the expansion. And in terms of TriMaster, he's looking pretty standard so far with the 10 depot, 12 and 13 refinery won't be seeing any early aggression from him now you're pretty familiar with destiny cricket uh any insight as to what we may be seeing from him in this tv uh, zvt matchup well oddly enough destiny actually went for a 14 hatch 13 pool which is a little bit earlier than normal he really didn't want to get that hatch blocked it's kind of crucial in his build that he gets that hatch because what makes him so popular of course is his infester play everyone wants to see destiny get mass infester with upgraded links and of course those upgraded links eventually uh, move to ultralisks and broodlords into that late game and so everyone loves to see him he has a very I mean, he's an extremely popular stream and so a great player getting better and better every single time and it's always a joy to see what he's going to be bringing to the table. Yeah, absolutely. Those look like uh, TriMaster will be opening up Reaper into Expand. He's got that first Reaper just about ready to pop. Second Reaper is going to be following suit as well and it should be moving out with that first Reaper. Obviously the early Reaper allowing you to get some early game map control until Metabolic Boost comes into play and also trying to do a little bit of harass. He does get that one drone kill there and then we'll be moving his way across the map trying to find out exactly where his opponent is. Yeah, and we see TriMaster, that expansion already going down, actually being really greedy with it, going to go and build it down where it will reside. Now he's going to go and lift up the barracks and move it into position. We'll probably see two more barracks or another barracks and bunker to complete that wall to protect the expansion that's going to go down. Now the Reaper is heading towards Destiny's base. Destiny actually did not build a spine right when he could have, but of course there's nothing there for the Reaper. That's a very sad Reaper, uh, as, <laughs> as finally there's a drone there, but unfortunately Queen is meeting him there, and uh, this Reaper could be in uh, have a whole lot of bad luck right now. Yeah, it looks like he is kind of trapped in the corner at the moment, pinned between the two Queens. Destiny pulling back to get an inject larva down on his main hatch, and again, as you said, the Reaper trapped there. We do have another one at the front, though. Looks like he will be getting the drone kill, finishing off. Oh, no, never mind. Actually, he pushed away by the Queen, and the other Reaper coming down finishing him off, so a little uh, nice teamwork there between those two. Some pretty impressive micro here from TriMaster. Yeah, and Destiny almost got away with that, trying to make it an extractor, that drone. But now we have drones and Reapers and Queens going at it. One drone actually gets the kill on the Reaper, and uh, so that is a hero drone. And it looks like about three drones went down, I believe. And so as of right now, this harass is not being effective. Well, as of now, I'm taking a look at the workers killed. It was a total of four. He does have that one at pretty low HP. But yeah, I cannot believe that drone sitting there with the kill. That is mighty impressive indeed. 
Uh, back over here for Trimaster, he does have a tech lab down on one of those racks at the frontal wall off, researching Stimpak as well as Combat Shield, so we do expect him to move into a bio type of transition, although interestingly enough, he is coming out with some Marauders, uh, maybe for fear of any sort of a, a uh, excuse me, any for fear of any sort of a Roach transition, although it doesn't look like Destiny will be doing that at the moment, but it does appear that we will be seeing a bio timing push here from Trimaster instead of kind of moving into that typical Marine tank transition. Yeah, and I absolutely agree. It's going to be that stim and combat shield that's so strong. That'll be finishing in about 60 more seconds with that stim taking, or the combat shields right behind it. And of course, we can see Destiny is gearing up for that infester play, and the, and the big tell is the two Evo chambers. He's starting that melee attack one and the carapace level one, getting all those gases, and we should see layer come up really soon as now. He's getting that good saturation from... The, uh, from his main and his natural. Of course, great placement from that Evo Chamber in the front, going to deny any kind of Hellions that Trimaster might think about switching to. And of course, Trimaster we see adding on his third and fourth refinery as well. Probably gonna be seeing a pretty big tech up if he decides to push once these upgrades are done. Yeah, obviously after this bio uh, this bio push that will be coming inevitably, we do expect a transition. Not very likely that he will stick to bio forever, especially given the fact that he's likely to be up against infester style play. Uh, mm -hmm. Fungal growth will kind of just go to town on what he has. Now, I will be interested to see, are we expecting Destiny to just stick on these two bases or do we look to see a third anytime soon from him? What do you think? Well, a part of the strategy is the... Um, is the mass speedlings give him a lot of extra control. So we're probably going to see an expansion, a third, come from him very soon. I'm actually kind of surprised that it hasn't come yet. Mm -hmm. And the reason, I I'm assuming why he it hasn't come yet is because he doesn't quite know what the Terran player is transitioning to. He didn't have an Overlord there to scout out, but of course now he knows. He had the Zonagas, and it's going to be a Marine Marauder stem time push, what we'd already talked about before. And these Infestors, unfortunately, are not going to be coming out at all. Layer just now finished, but there's not even an Infestation Pit, so he's going to have to deal with this strictly with Lings. Yeah, it's going to be pretty rough. Uh, not, does, not looking like he has any Banelings either. Now he's got some Lings on the backside. He should be trying to get us around. Here comes the Marauders in first. We'll be sniping out some of these units, trying to drop any Spines although we don't even have any here. And there we go, Jones moving up from the front as well as those Speedlings. Speedlings coming up from the backside as well. We do have a full surround, but look at the DPS of that bio tearing through almost wow. everything there. That was a lot of damage. Speedlings finally mopping it up, but that was pretty hefty losses there. Wow, and Destiny got very lucky dealing with that with a lot of lings, but of course, looking at the resources lost tab, oddly enough, Trimaster is still behind from mm. that Reaper pressure that didn't that actually was not effective. If we even look at the Harvester tab, we see that Trimaster did take a lead. Destiny lo lost a lot of drones, and unfortunately, he didn't have that extra third in order to recoup from that. So I think Destiny's in a bad spot. Infestation Pit now just getting started, so it's really going to matter if Destiny is given the time to rebuild that army. Of course, he just now checked to see if Trimaster had a third for himself, but I think Trimaster's sitting pretty good right now. Yeah, it looks like overall so far, 12 drones have been killed for Trimaster, so he has managed to do a bit of economic damage, and obviously also during that engagement, he forced all of those drones off the line, and that was a bit of uh, not mining time that was going on for Destiny. It does look like Trimaster is preparing for that typical transition of Marine Tank. Now he's got uh, tanks turning out of three factories, in fact. That seems pretty heavy for two bases, but three <laughs> factories worth of tanks coming through, and then pretty Marine heavy as well. Also getting the uh, vehicle level one upgrades as well as weapon level one upgrades. Uh, looks like Destiny is quite a bit ahead in terms of upgrades as well. Coming out with Pathogen Glands right now for those Infestors, but he is coming out with uh, the level 2-2 upgrades for his ground units. So, Yeah, and those Infestors, they're going to be gearing up. He's going to make a lot of them. He's been saving that gas. He's at o almost 1,300. There he spends it on five Infestors. Mm -hmm. He was minor uh, supply blocked, unfortunately. Actually, a really big supply block. That's very unfortunate. He did not need that right now, but once again, still not getting a third. This is very uncharacteristic I'm of Destiny. Pretty, I'm pretty interested to see that he's still just on those two bases. Looks like we yeah. have a drone moving out right now though, so finally, 12 minutes game time, moving out to his third. Major concern here, of course, is that Trimaster went you know, one one racks expand. You know, he's been he's been at his second base for quite some time, and actually Reaper over here harassing <laughs> this attempted expansion, doing a bit of damage, and that's going to make it so that once that hatch does finish, it'll be at, it won't be at full health. So, well, that Reaper's he he wants revenge. I mean, he <laughs> he's been there since the beginning. Yeah. And unfortunately, one claw of the Ling taking him out, but here we go, big push, siege tank tech and Marines from Trimaster. I don't know if Destiny has what it takes. He has his his clutch infestors. 
but it's going to take some really good fungals. Yeah, he's also coming out with the Hive Tech right now. Here come the fungal growths expected on that bio. And there we go. Speedlings trying to move up. He doesn't quite have a lot of Speedlings. And ooh, lost all of his Infestors. He has got one left pushing back. The Infested Terrans, though, forcing splash damage against the tanks, doing quite a bit of damage. But still, Trimaster does have forces in the middle. We've got 20 more Speedlings coming out. Spire just about to finish. Hive just about to finish. Are we going to see a quick tech into Broodlords here? Are we expecting that? Oh, that's exactly up Destiny's alley. And that <laughs> that last battle was uh, went heavily in Destiny's favor, even though he lost his uh, all the Infestors. Like one fungal, I think, got all of the Marines. So very lucky that Trimaster didn't split it all, bringing SCVs up to the front line to repair those tanks as they hold down the fort, even laying down some missile turrets. Now we do see Trimaster getting a third. Destiny's third is up as well. Hopefully, Destiny, he really needs to get that saturated fast. Um, he does have enough Infestors right now to defend, but yeah, I think Broodlords are on the way, and of course he's even upgrading Neural Parasite. Yeah, and it does look like that Greater Spire is coming through, so we are expecting to see those Broodlords sometime soon. Obviously very potent against this Marine, this Marine tank type build. We are going to need to see some sort of a Viking transition for Trimaster, but even with that, some nice Fungal Gross can really deny a lot of that Viking damage. Uh, again, Destiny is working to saturate that third expansion, but once more, as Cricket mentioned, Trimaster moving into his third, and this is kind of a vulnerable position uh, you know we, we mentioned so often in these games that zerg really needs to try to be one base up against terran or protoss and that really hasn't been the case so far this game for destiny although he's doing a pretty decent job during those engagements especially the last one like you mentioned right well and and the good the big plus with destiny's uh play style is that you can actually play at even bases for the most part. You can't stick to even bases, but you can survive a whole lot longer than you would if you were going Mutaling, uh, Baneling composition. Now Destiny's going to be able to hold this because you can't push very fast. A Terran player is going to get fungled. He's going to lay down some infested bombs on your on your own tanks and your own units. So Destiny is going to be okay, but still, it's a very, kind of like what you said, vulnerable, and I'd even say a very fragile position because there's a good opportunity to make things happen, but it's so fragile, it comes down to positioning and control. Trimaster moving up all of his tanks. Yeah, very aggressive stance right now. We do have Brew Lords just about to pop. Vikings coming through, though they're not out yet. And those Brew Lords should start going to town. Some nice fungals there on the bio. One Brew Lord does get sniped down. Another fungal goes down. Those Marines pushing forward, though, and managing to snipe down the Brew Lords. Just one left. I've got another one morphing in here, but unfortunately, these Marines able to take out a majority of that Broodlord. Those Speedlings mopping up those tanks. A bit of damage there. Nice, and uh, Trimaster is trying to stem and move Marines up to help, but I think that engagement went very good for Destiny. Half owl, but the Vikings taking out the Broodlord <laughs> there. A few clutch fungals there, but, these, but Trimaster has said, oh yeah, I have to split my Marines. So he's doing that. The tanks are going to retreat, salvaging the bunkers. And I think Destiny might have been able to survive this huge marine tank push. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that was very interesting to see Trimaster be so aggressive with that contain and that very slow push. I mean, he went right up into Destiny's face there <laughs> yeah. with that. And, again, pretty surprising. You don't see that that often, at least that aggressive. That seemed like a bit much. Uh, a couple of speedlings pushing forward towards that tank line. They do get taken out pretty quickly and are forced to retreat. And we have Vikings moving around and actually sniping out some, uh, sniping out some of the overlords here inside of the main and expansion of Destiny. And and that's really what's vulnerable until if Destiny makes all of those corruptors into broodlords immediately, you have nothing to protect. And the last thing you really want to be doing is wasting that precious energy on fungals for a single Viking. You really want to be able to use that on those uh, on the Marines whenever they clump up. But of course, Trimaster, he's not going to let this middle go. He's, he's actually supply blocking Destiny with those Vikings, and he is more than okay with hanging out in the middle of the base, containing it, and of course we even see him snagging a fourth along with Destiny. Yeah, we do have a few more Vikings moving across the map. Is he going to get a fungal? No, he is actually neural parasiting one to kill off the other. Very, very interesting play indeed. Uh, not something you see every day. And then he's landing the other nice. one to get us around. Very nice there by Destiny. Uh, that's pretty impressive. But yeah, pretty heavy contain here from Trimaster. And again, we do see him moving down into this expansion here as well, the fourth. 
And and one of the scary things, of course, we're noticing is that Destiny is really banking a lot of minerals. He's he's really low on gas, but of course we see one Ultralisk coming. We see a ton of upgrades, yeah. defense and weapons level three for the Zerg adrenal glands, chitinous plating, a lot of stuff going on. And now Trimaster switching into the Ghost once again, another neural parasite Viking, gonna <laughs> land that, take it out. So Destiny definitely knows how to use these infestors to the best of their ability. Also, something interesting is that pre igniter upgrade coming. Normally you wouldn't see it this late in the game, but Trimaster trying to uh, be as effective as possible with, ever, with whatever composition he needs. Yeah, he wants to make sure that he can get some of those Hellions out to help deal with the Speedling uh, overwhelming forces that you do typically see late game, especially once you get to start, you know, you start to get Vespian starved, and uh, once you lose your army from any big engagement, you're sitting on a ton of minerals, and you usually see Zerg players massing up Speedling, so mm -hmm. hopefully some Blue Flame Hellions will help him with that. Another Neural Parasited Viking gets dropped. <laughs> Pretty interesting indeed. Speedling moving forward, taking out the uh, missile turret as well, trying to get a little bit of scouting, maybe test out where that tank line lies and uh, prepare himself for any engagement. We have a lot of infestors here for Destiny, though, as expected, but man, oh man, that is quite a bit sitting now at, let's take a look at the number, total of 13 infestors, one ultra. He's got four more coming through, so he is getting ready for a massive push, trying to break this contain. Yeah, and it's all going to come down at once. He's going to move everything in. Destiny, probably a good option will be to lay down actually a few infested Terrans in the front to take the initial siege tank damage. But those Vikings, man, those things are so annoying. He has taken out so many overlords. There should be an overlord kill count because these Vikings are tearing <laughs> it up. And yeah, once again, supply blocking Destiny. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Destiny sitting at supply block and then be forced to come up with some more overlords. Ooh, Infestor's moving towards a tank line. Again, he did test it out with the Zerglings to find out exactly where they are. But now that they're bunched up, he feels comfortable uh, drawing some of those fungal growths. Now, I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing any drop harass here from Trimaster. You know, dropping one or two medevacs at either one of the expansions can do quite a bit of damage, but I haven't been seeing that from him at all. Yeah, and kind of like what you said, we don't see Trimaster that much. His play style really isn't known by many people, so I don't know if that's just uncharacteristic of his play, but definitely if he was dropping, I think it'd be a whole lot more effective. But what we really don't see is we don't see a lot of medvacs. Just looking around the map, there's not really any... Okay, I'm looking We've at the zero. <laughs> there's no medvacs. That's why I can't find any. They're pretty so, nuts, So Trimaster, yeah. maybe that's just not a part of his play. Yeah, pretty interesting, especially since he does have a decent amount of bio here between a lot of ghosts there to try to deal uh, with those infestors once the time does come. And it looks like Destiny is ramping up for an engagement. We'll be pushing forward with those Ultralis first, it seems. And there we go. Ultra's getting ready to push. Speedling's coming up behind as well. Infestor's following suit. And let's see if he's able to break this at all. Speedling's trying to get us around. We do need some fungal growth over here. Some of it going down on the bio. All those, uh, oh, there we go. Some very nice neural parasites there on the tank line. And it looks like Destiny breaking the contain. He's lost a lot of his speedlings, only a few ultras left, but he's gonna take care of these tanks. And will we see a counter push from him? It seems pretty needed. Absolutely. Now Trimaster, you can check he's expanded everywhere on this map. He has a lot of bases, and of course Destiny's in that position where he can remax, and we see that exactly going down. We can check the supply tab and see that Destiny does have that supply overhead right after that battle. But I don't think Trimaster's gonna go down this easily. He does have a good bit of production facilities. He's gonna be able to remake a good bit of army, and of course one EMP shuts down those infestors. So um, I definitely, oh, we see infestor bomb on yep. Trimaster's third, we'll and he's gonna have to win all that way. There. He's all out of energy pretty much on those infestors, but just dropping that should be able to kill those uh, refineries. Probably get that starport there as well, so hopefully it was worth it for him. Forcing the lift off is enough damage as is. Yeah, but uh, I I'm looking at the units tab and I see a nuke. Oh just boy, we got one it. nuke banked, so hopefully uh, we manage to catch that whenever it does come into play. And I will be interested to see if he tries to do any uh, structural damage or economic damage with it, or if he's going to actually save it up to try to get himself in a nice positioning. You know, once we see Destiny push forward, if he tries to drop a nuke just to force him out of position and maybe walk him into a tank line or something like that. That's something you see fairly often, although not as much in, in uh, TVZ. I see it more in TVP uh, nukes to mm -hmm. try to force positioning. Right, and uh, if we take note at the top left-hand corner, Destiny gearing up for some kind of drop play, even has an Ultralisk loaded up in one. That is an Overlord that is working hard. Got that big fat mama in there. So the uh, so the Overlords are going. It looks like he's going to try and drop the main. Now Trimaster has those turrets along the side of his main, so I bet an Overlord or two will go down. Even has a pack of Marines, so it's almost like he's ready and waiting for it. But I like to see this diversity from Destiny going into this drop play 
Hopefully it'll be effective for him, but I think TriMaster's in a good position to defend it. Yeah, here comes the drop play at the same time. We do see Destiny attempting to move up on the third. One Overlord gets sniped. Oh no, it's still up right now, dropping those Zerglings. We've got some fungals there as well from those Infestors. And in the main, he's looking to do quite a bit of damage. Infestors sitting idly. We do have some uh, Infestors down at the third expansion as well, and some Zerglings trying to move it forward and do some damage. But there's action going on all over the place. The main of TriMaster getting worked right now from Speedlings and Ultras. Looks like TriMaster did take care of the Zerg forces from Destiny in the middle, but his main is pretty vulnerable, and he's losing a lot of production here. And there was a nuke in the top left-hand corner in Destiny's oh base. Oh my gosh, you should have interrupted <laughs> me. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was silently enjoying it, sorry. Um, about 20 workers uh, were killed. Destiny didn't see it, didn't scout it out, and that's why that ghost is still up there. So I, I don't I, I don't know if that'll be the last nuke though. So we'll have to we'll have to see. Yeah, there's no more in production, and we don't have one geared up as well. But that nuke obviously helping turn the tide. I was really thinking, you know, Destiny was very far ahead with the amount of damage he did to the production buildings, but that nuke helped him quite a bit. Uh, Going to be forcing Destiny to try to redrone up a little bit to try to get on par. We still do have four infestors though chilling out in the main, and they're working their way down. They're going to be uh, spotted by these turrets, but not before dropping a ton of infested Dang. turrets. And here we go. Should be seeing some damage dealt with this. Absolutely. This uh, he'll probably focus uh, down this orbital command. It's going to go Look down that. super fast, and every little bit of that helps. But yeah. of course, what do we see on the production tab? We see a nuke, my friend. So another, another nuke's think, coming out. I think uh, I, I think we'll see another one. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, another nuke and uh, another Ghost Academy as well. So we can maybe save up a few more nukes. Very, very interesting. And hopefully, we do catch that next one. And there it is. Nukes getting oh. dropped. Oh. It's gonna be very close. Let's see if it manages to hit. Destiny responds in time. Beautiful spotting there. Checking all of his expansions immediately when hearing the nuke. Manages to pull away, but we can still watch it because. That is oh so beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. A little bit of damage to the hatch, yep. but not much else there. Golly, look how many infestors that is. That is a total of 29 infestors. I mean, you can... I don't even know how many infested Terrans that would be. It would be a, like... You'd have a max 400 to 200 army or something. But we see, once again, more nukes, more ghosts coming, but five ultralisks. This is just going to come down to who can bust the other one and then from there push into someone's base and cut down the production facilities. Now, Destiny did lay down some good infested bombs, taking the, out the orbital in the natural and, of course, the orbital in the main. But I don't think TriMaster is out of the game quite yet. He has a lot of bases that are still worked and ready to go. Destiny taking half the map for himself as well. But one thing that we didn't take note of is TriMaster. I love the sensor tower. I yeah. really, really like it. It, oh. it. it allows him to not have to put all of his forces in the middle if he doesn't want it. Uh, but we do see more infested bombs actually going to try and shoot down that nuclear facility, unfortunately. So that might take down our, our nuke possibility. Yeah, actually, and that's not the one that's currently producing one, but he's going to manage to drop that. And yes, it does take away the nuke. Uh, they finally managed to take care of that. We still do have some Broden Festers chilling out in the main at the same time, though. Here comes a big push right now from Destiny. Moving across the middle, getting a full surround on those tanks. There's a nice tank spread, though. Ultra's coming in a little bit too late, and that's going to force Destiny to pull back right now. Pretty intense game thus far. We got a Neural Parasite and Marauder. See you later, buddy. And oh no, the Ghosts get Fungo. That was a lot of damage. Very nice catch there by Destiny, dropping that Fungo on those Ghosts. That was some pretty heavy resource loss there for TriMaster. And I love the uh, neural parasited marauder. I, I don't know if there was a purpose other than just giggles, uh, but it definitely made me smile. And I'm trying to scan the whole left side. Are there any ghosts on Destiny's side? I think he's done a good job of taking majority of them out. But, of course, the two other Ghost Academies are at the bottom right-hand corner in that TriMaster's base there. And it does look like he's actually going to gear up for a drop, what we've been talking about before. He needed to do this about 20 minutes ago, right. but I'm glad to finally see it happening. Yeah, it's going to be a Marauder drop, so obviously the main point behind this is to do some tech sniping. Try to snipe out that Greater Spire, the Spawning Pool, Infestation Pit, obviously going to be a priority target. Now, this will be spotted by the Overlord, so let's see if Destiny is able to respond. Destiny moving with a drop of his own. <laughs> drop ships and Overlords passing. <laughs> each other hilariously enough but let's see how much damage trimaster is able to do here yeah the marauders are now dropping of course the queen is the first one to go down is he going to go for the hive probably the infestation pit but it doesn't matter De destiny already has 27 infestors so not too big of a hit from him but they it looks like they are going to try and get this hive destiny right on the ball though oh they're going to go for the the greater spire it is going to go down in time out. 
It's gonna oh no, my gosh. Destiny managing to defend the Greater Spire. <laughs> Unbelievably at the same time, here comes the Speedling drop as well as a few Infestors down here in the bottom right uh, position and he is destroying those SCVs without issue, burrowing some of those Infestors, getting ready to drop some Fungals. No, the scam goes down, taking out one Infestor, second Infestor gets dropped, but still that was a lot of economic damage there for Destiny. Yeah, looking at that Harvester tab, the Marines, of course, and the Ghosts are cleaning up that drop, but Harvester tab, Trimaster took a serious hit to the economy, like you had already said. It, he's down to 27 because there's another run by yeah. in the third of Trimaster. So Destiny is not allowing much mining going on, bringing him all the way down to 600 minerals a minute while Destiny's still mining happily. Just actually four Ultralists just chilling up um, near the uh, north middle of the of the map mm -hmm. and of course you see destiny once again mobilizing the lings speedlings and infestors i think we might see a pretty big push come soon as Des or trimaster tries to hold the middle right part of the map yeah you know destiny has been doing a fantastic do job of doing economic damage and he still has two infestors inside of what was once the main of trimaster though it looks like that has shifted his main looking down to be the bottom <laughs> right now but uh, Destiny just doing a fantastic amount of economic damage so far this game. We take a look. Workers killed 51 so far this game, and he's got another push coming, forcing the lift off again. And Trimaster just seems to be a bit too uh, spread thin and not having the economy to have enough forces everywhere that he needs to be. And Destiny doing a good job of taking advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. And Trimaster looks like he's going to do a little shooting, scooting, taking out a lot of lings. Uh, Destiny's gonna go ahead and try and save those Ultralists as much as he can, but use it almost as bait. Ooh, those oh, we got some... look hungry. Yeah, we do have some, uh, we do have some cloak ghost here. Is he gonna land the MPs? No, looks like a couple snipes there. Managing to take out one fungal growth, just missing. And uh, the ghosts do manage to sneak back, so Trimaster does need to be pretty precise there. Try to get a, a, at least rid of the energy, if not sniping a few of those Infestors. But again, uh, economic advantage definitely going to Destiny right now, and he's been doing a pretty solid job this game. We take a look at the Unit Lost tab too, and Trimaster's quite a bit behind. So as the game progresses, it seems like Destiny is getting further and further ahead of Trimaster. Yeah, and just taking note of Destiny, a Banelian Nest has been created that is unheard of for Destiny. <laughs> he always uses Infestors, so Banelian Nest is coming, but also very smartly, a Greater Spire also almost finished as well. So yep. he knows the other one could get sniped. He's going to have a backup plan because he really wants to see have Broodlords. Oddly enough, he hasn't made them since like the 16-minute mark, and so we're almost at the 40-minute mark, but he might be thinking about switching back to those Broodlords that are going to do some serious damage. Of course, a drop was denied in the middle part of the base. Destiny burrowing all those drones to make sure no drones were killed in that. So Destiny just staying on top of everything. Yeah, in Destiny this. with so uh, with some infested Terrans managing to snipe that third expansion. Moving out with some infested. We have got a lot of nukes coming. We got to spot them. There's one here in the upper left. And where are the other ones? There are a few. Oh my gosh, are they all going to be here upper left? We've got one nuke about to land. Destiny doesn't see it. There we go. See you later. Lots of workers there. Not sure where the other ones were. I didn't see them. I heard at least two go yeah. off. So I'm not really sure what ended up happening with that, but that was certainly a pretty effective new killing off quite a few workers there. Pretty intense <laughs> action so far this game. Golly, and we're gearing to the late, late, late game. This is the late wee of the hours uh, for this map. Of course, Trimaster, I haven't seen these Blue Flame Hellions do anything. They've, they've been chilling here in the middle of the map, just desiring to eat up some wings, but <laughs> I just haven't seen anything happen. Um, Destiny's been doing an amazing job at shutting down the ghost, but oh my goodness, there it is in the top left-hand corner, the nuke. I don't know if there's another one. Oh, looks like uh, the nuke does get spotted just in time. Destiny managing to sneak away. He will take some hatch damage again, losing the extractor as well as a few larvae, but not losing workers there. And it looks like Destiny should be able to take care of it. Does he see it running around? Is he going to drop the fungal? No, it looks like that is a very stealthy ghost indeed. <laughs> He's going to make it home pretty <laughs> oh, safe. But this nuke harass, uh, you know, being pretty effective. He did get that one big damage dealing one that we just saw not too long ago. That one didn't do too much, but that's that's the thing. He does need to return economic damage, and he is doing that. Absolutely. They are paying for themselves. You check the workers killed. Um, he's actually, Destiny's gotten 58, but my goodness, he's getting back in this. Trimaster with 52 drone kills. So he's, he's uh, paying back all that was received. And, of course, we see... Uh, something that we never see in Destiny games, and that's Banelings morphing in. Um, I do believe Centrifugal Hook's just now finishing, and so I think Destiny's finally gearing up for some kind of push, and here he moves across the middle of the map. 
Yeah, I definitely feel like as we're progressing to the later stages, we are feeling Destiny to be in a strong position. Even though he has taken some damage from those nukes, it looks like overall he's sitting pretty solidly. Again, we do take a look at the uh, total resources lost, and TriMaster has been progressively getting further and further behind. Now we do have some Infested Terrans dropping on the high ground. We are forcing some splash damage against those tanks there. Uh, Ghost coming in to try to help. I don't think he actually killed anything there, but nope. uh, we'll, we'll be dropping down. Still forcing some damage, I guess, against those tanks, and uh, we'll be dropping down a turret to try to make sure he can deal with that in the future as well. Oh, a perfect scan down by Trimaster, seeing all those infestors. That forces Destiny to just have to wait a little bit longer. We have a forward turret being made as well for Trimaster because he wants to hit those infestors right when they pass that grass line. And, of course, uh, we do see, uh-oh, another nuke, and infestors are going for the infested bombs. Where's the nuke at? Uh, it looks like it is upper left, uh, just to the outer outer expansion there where we saw it earlier. Drones do get pulled off the line, but the hatch will be taking some damage. Uh, extractors, oh, no, wow, it was just out of range of the hatch, evidently, not doing any damage. Hmm. Uh, Overseer coming over to try to help get rid of that. And we do have a couple of infested herons that were sitting on the high ground. Still two more <laughs> infestors inside of the main of Trimaster. Those haven't been put to work for quite a while, though. Sitting pretty idly with that. And it looks like some drones will be killing off the ghost here that just dropped that nuke. <laughs> yes. Go. <laughs> I, I don't know why he's just not trying to shoot there. We've got another nuke dropping out again, trying to hit the same expansion. He's just been relentless, and I'm a little surprised that he keeps going for this one, although I guess this is really the only mining one right now. And uh, why is he walking? His worker's back. It looks like he just managed to sneak out of the range there, just killing off that extractor. Again, unfortunately, another failed nuke, and Destiny is moving up into that top center position for his next expansion. Oh, man, we have a big engagement in the middle. The Ghost almost EMPing all the investors, but they're not. They're going to have a short-lived life. A huge engagement. Ultras, looks like they are going to push back, but Trimaster losing all of his Ghosts, a few good snipes, but I don't know if it was worth it. Still one Ghost thinking he is Rambo, going for everybody, <laughs> and uh, gets taken out by some huge claws. Uh, but, yeah, that movement from the drone on that last nuke, it almost felt like it was like a manner movement. Like, you can have my <laughs> drones. Oh, oh, I'm just going to walk all around the nuclear site before you before it even comes down. So I think Destiny, he feels pretty comfortable with everything. He has the bases, Trimaster. And I think the biggest thing is that you can see from the in or how much minerals they have. Trimaster has been doing a good job of spending his money, but that's because he's spending what he has. Destiny has been maxed out for forever. He can easily remake his army and make what he needs. But when you're making three nukes at a time, you can't expect to have much money. Yeah, that's that's the thing with nuke plays. That is, it is so expensive, and it seems more cost-effective to just be going with some marine drops. Now, we do have Trimaster moving into the bottom expansion. He has managed to snipe it. Uh, all of those drones did burrow, so he didn't take too much drone damage there. But still, uh, pretty interesting. He managed to snipe out that expansion, cutting back some of Destiny's mining, at least temporarily. And we have the infested bombs in the top right-hand corner. Those infestors hadn't done anything until now. They are going to try and snipe out those add-ons. Both tech labs do go down, and it looks like they're going to focus fire. One factory goes on fire, and uh, luckily nothing was being created from it. Trimaster playing very smartly there. Unfortunately, that tank getting sniped out immediately. But mutas are actually out on the field, sniping down some turrets in the bottom right-hand corner. And it looks like these tanks are going to be extremely vulnerable while nukes are going down as well. Yeah, mutas are getting shredded a little bit, forced back by those marines. This nuke not spawned. Body dead by Destiny, and I think he's gonna get about half of these drones oh. killed here. Nukes gonna land, and oh, Destiny taking a little bit more, about two thirds of the workers at that line get taken out. So unfortunately, Destiny, you know, as we progress in the later stages of the game, it does become difficult to check everywhere for those nukes, although he does only have two mining bases, so I'm surprised he didn't check those immediately. Maybe he just didn't mm -hmm. hear the nuke caught up in all the action. Well, and oddly enough, the Harvester tab is now in favor of Trimaster. Uh, it, it only took about 10 nukes, but he finally <laughs> took the advantage of it. And uh, once again, going in the bottom right-hand corner with those mutas sniping out the turrets. And yet again, another nuke going down. These mutas are going to get pushed back. Is it? Yep, it's in that same top left-hand corner base there. I think and, it's going to kill the hatch this time, oh. though. A couple workers, uh, unfortunately, walking right into that. <laughs> that but the rally. hatch does get dropped. And, you know, it's interesting because we are seeing Trimaster do a bit of damage. But the question is, at what cost? Because if you take a look at the supply, he is almost half of where Destiny is at right now. He is not in a good position in terms of army supply uh, in comparison. And, you know, Destiny is just pretty comfortable sitting up and continuing to macro through the game, trying to harass with these uh, with the mutas moving across the map. But again, you know, investing in those nukes can do a lot of damage, but it's also clearly setting behind his overall army size. 
Yeah, the Mutas are in what used to be the main of Trimaster and Broodlords at the bottom right hand corner taking things out. They are protected by the Ultras, Lings, and Banelings. Infestors following slowly behind. And there's only a few cloaked ghosts. Are they going to be able to land those key snipes? I don't know oh, if he's going to have enough. Oh, sniping through all of the oh. Broodlords. Unbelievably. Now we are seeing Destiny push forward though. I think he's fed up and he's just trying to tear through. He's going to muscle his way through because he does have that supply advantage. EMP is going down on the Confessors, but still, even with those clutch snipes against the Broodlords and the EMPs landing on the Infestors, I just don't think Trimaster has enough to deal with this push. I think we're going to finally see him fall. They are pushing up into what used to be the main uh, or the natural of Trimaster. All those units getting taken out from the Banelings. All the Ultras just being a boss. And then there's the GG from Trimaster. Pretty intense game. Uh, very, very long indeed. I cannot believe we just commentated a 50-minute game, but <laughs> eventually going to Destiny. And let's just, I don't know, give like a quick, quick little summary of what happened there. As we progressed into the mid and late game, unfortunately the only type of harass that we saw from Trimaster, and I really, I'm really going to say, aside from Destiny being so effective in his economic harass, he did some very good drops, he did some beautiful infested Terran bombs. I mean, he had infestors inside of Trimaster's main for... 20 minutes maybe yeah i mean they're still there the game is over and these investors <laughs> are still sitting here um but the economic damage plus i think the fact that trimaster relied so heavily on the nukes mm -hmm. they just cost so much and sometimes they do no damage as we saw i think that attributed to is a pretty big uh, loss there yeah, and he never added on those big Thors, those guys that have the big cannons on each arm. <laughs> they are so good against taking taking damage and dealing damage against those armored units. They do so well and extra damage to those armored units. And really, he used all of the energy from the ghosts on the Broodlords, and then all of a sudden, ten Ultras roll up in your face, and you have no more energy to lay down those snipes. So I think relying on maybe a, a slightly bulkier units would have been a better idea. I think kind of what you said, he needed more drops. That one drop in the main... It was effective. Why didn't he keep doing it? But those nukes just, it costed a lot. Sure, he finally evened out the Harvester tab, but at that point in time, Destiny had the map and he had the game. Yeah, so absolutely pretty awesome game here in the first of this best of three series here between Destiny and Trimaster. Again, this is going to be from the Quick Webs eight player tournament. This is the first set in the round of eight, and we should be moving on right to game number two. That's correct, Cricket? Yes, sir. All right, we'll see you guys in just a few minutes.